Ladies and gentlemen, it is football season at Bethune-Cookman University. The 2017 season is upon us. This is the BCU Wildcat Football Insider Preseason Special. I'm Brian Harvey and I'm excited about another season of Wildcat football here in Daytona Beach. 2016 was, well, a little bit different for the Wildcats. The Cats went four and six overall on the year, but there was some absolutely outstanding things that happened down the stretch. The Cats won four of their last five games, including that's right, the Florida Blue Florida Classic, the sixth consecutive win over Florida A&M. So the Wildcats might not have started off great. They had a tough contest against North Texas. That's an FBS opponent, then came home. Hurricanes everywhere, just bad weather, injuries, everything that could have happened to the Wildcats and Terry Sims last year did happen. But nonetheless, the Cats did bounce back to win games at Norfolk State, at Morgan State, homecoming against Delaware State, and of course, Florida and m but then suffered a season ending uh, loss at South Carolina State, which concluded up four and six. Well, 2017 is resurgence. And with resurgence, I'd like to welcome in the new voice of the Wildcats at Bethune-Cookman University, Nolan Alexander. Nolan, resurgence. That's what we're talking about in 2017. What is going to resurge for Bethune-Cookman football? Well, Brian, thanks for having me on. It's an absolute pleasure to be a part of this family as you pray together in 2017. The first thing that comes to my mind when we talk about resurgence is the attitude and the energy of BCU football. And I think that's exhibited right here at Fan Day 2017. This is outstanding, Brian. Absolutely. There's absolutely. no shortage of Wildcat fans here at Daytona Beach. What I look forward to this season, though, playmakers. When you brought me in here, you told me this football team is loaded in 2017 at many positions. And talking of with the offense right now, I think you start at wide receiver, quarterback, running back, even at the offensive line. They're all over the place. Absolutely all over the place. And Nolan, I, I want to start with someone that I love. That's 1-5 Frank Brown. That, that is your playmaker, at least for me, for the wide receiver position. You're talking about a guy like Frank Brown. You're talking about a guy that when he touches the ball, he makes things happen. That's a person that I'm looking forward to uh, on the wide receiver part. Now, when you look in the running back position, they're all over the place. This may be one of the deepest running back positions I I've ever seen. I don't even know who to call a playmaker back there because all of them that touch the ball, they could be a playmaker. Who, who would you go with? Yahtzee. Put them up in a can, shake them up. Well, let's talk about the receivers to start out. You mentioned Frank Brown, Boozy 1-5. Behind him, there's more depth. Jawill Davis, Kevon Mitchell is going to play a bigger part in the return game as well. Whoever's quarterback, Larry Brim, Akevius Williams, Colin Anderson, and there's no shortage of weapons in their arsenal to dish the ball to. No, the, no, the shortage is, is somewhere else. That's another school. It, it's not here at Bethune-Cookman. You talked about it right there. You got Larry Brim. You got uh, Jabari Dunham is another kid that, that's at the quarterback position that, that's been there. You got Colin Anderson coming in. Then you got Akevius Williams. That, that's a guy that, when you talk about a person that was a playmaker in high school in Madison County, he was one. You know, he, he's a guy that filled in last year, had to come in. You had injuries to Anthony Cruz. You had an injury to Larry Brim. Well, Kivis Williams comes in and gets much needed playing time. So you talk about that redshirt sophomore this year. He's that guy. And, and then when you look at running back, Jamaris Tompkins, Tupac Ismi, uh, Mike Jones is back. I mean, there are so many. But then you mentioned a person that's also going to be one, Jawil Davis, 1-7. That is a person I'm looking for big things this year, and, and I think he's looking for something as well. Well, you hit on with the running backs. Four running backs for BCU. Cameron Rigby, Jamaris Tompkins, Tompkins, excuse me. Cameron Rigby, Jamaris Tompkins, Tupac Ismi. 68% of BCU's rushing yards are returned with those four running backs. And then Michael Jones. I think that's an X factor for this BCU offense. He returns to health after missing 2016. Mike Jones is that guy that you look forward to. And in 2017, he's the guy that is resurgence. Plenty more to touch on in the offensive and defensive side of the ball. We'll take a short break. Stay tuned for everything coming up. BCU football. This is the BCU Wildcat Football Insider Show. The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? In the Mideastern Athletic Conference, we believe the game of life shouldn't be a game of chance. That's why we're taught to work as hard in the classroom as we do on the field. Because you're not just playing for the trophy, you're playing for the ultimate prize. 
your future. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, 13 member institutions, 16 championships, one goal, educating student athletes for the game of life. At BCU, every game is a life lesson. A chance to show faith, respect, and sportsmanship. It's bigger than winning or losing. There's life beyond the game. Opportunities beyond the classroom. Responsibilities to our community. On a much larger stage. As ambassadors to the world. Leaders, champions, we are Wildcats. And we believe in faith, integrity, and love. Enter to learn, depart to serve. That's the Bethune Cookman way. Go Wildcats! DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? And welcome back to the 2017 BCU Wildcat Football Insider Preseason Special. We're so glad you're joining us here today, Fan Day 2017. There's no shortage of Wildcat fans here in Daytona Beach. Brian, we were talking about the offense in the last segment. And one area we did hit on that, in my opinion, is the most important on the offense is the men up front, how they fight in the trenches. I think that's a key question mark heading into 2017, how that unit plays. You know what? I think the offensive line is one that is absolutely that question mark, to, to, to be frank, Nolan. You look at a guy like Philip Norman, that, that's going to be your anchor on that line this year. And you have to have someone like that that's a veteran that steps in. You got guys like Joe Busereth, some other guys that are going to be there to kind of protect that guy behind there. Because with the offensive line in this system, they play an important role. They've got to not only open up holes, they've got to make sure the snap is down pat, Nolan. I mean, you're talking about working out of the shotgun 98% of the time. If they are ever under center, it's probably because it's a quick rush. So you, you look at a fast-paced offense, you talk about that. These are the guys that are going to have to protect that quarterback, and they've got to open up those holes, and they've got to give the running backs time to find a hole if there's nothing there. So yes, offense line is absolutely a question mark, but I'm looking forward to a guy like Philip Norman. We'll meet more of the offensive line as the season progresses, but right now let's talk to one of the signal callers as we meet redshirt sophomore quarterback from Madison County, Florida, Akevius Williams. joined by redshirt sophomore quarterback Akevius Williams. Akevius, we're here at Fan Day. This is a huge event. How many autographs have you signed so far? Oh, basically a, a good couple, a handful. Um, we got uh, people who's uh, good alumni, old alumni coming through, uh, showing some love for the BCU uh, family. And pretty much it's, it's a couple, a handful of uh, autographs that I was signed before. Well, I know there's more to come. You're a redshirt sophomore, so last year was your first taste of college football at the Division I level. And based on the numbers, it led a little bit more room to grow in your passing game. This year, BCU brings in a new offensive coordinator and former Wildcat great Alan Suber. When he arrived, what was the game plan this offseason for you to grow as a passer? Um, just uh, more repetition and just getting more confident and and my being more decisive with my balls and who I'm throwing to and, and KYP with knowing your personnel and just just being more, more confident in my throws and following up with each and every day, watching each and every practice of uh, how I delivered a strike or how I did this, how I completed that, just to try to get in the same rhythm each and every throw. So are you feeling that things are starting to click more in your game? Yes, I, I feel that. That, I, that I'm getting more confident and I feel like it's not only a, a running perspective now, now that I can throw the ball better than I did last year. So would you say that the game slowed down for you? Um, I say with, with time being, with me playing and getting, getting the reps that I had last season, the game slowed down just a little, but as time going and we're preparing more and watching more film, the game will eventually slow more down. 
How has Coach Suber tried to connect with you? Obviously, there's a lot of similarities. He was a quarterback and a quarterback at BCU, a highly decorated one. Um, he just came in and teaching us the things of what not to do and how to prepare for this and how to prepare for that. Um, not alone, you, like you saying, that he was a quarterback and the quarterback for BCU. So he's just showing us the, the tips of, of how to, to get the game going more faster for us and how to, to manage the game, even though that he did it real well, and try to be better than him. Now, what was very obvious last year, Kievius, was how well the running game came to you. You were quite a natural out there. Six rushing touchdowns. Has the run part of the game always been a part of your game? Oh, yeah. That, that's my thing. That's my thing. I, I love to run the ball. And I feel like if any time that the O-line or the tight ends can give me a crease, I'm going to strike the band every time. Just, just that much love for them. When did that start? Have you always been fast? Oh, yeah. My parents are fast. My, my pops are, uh, was fast. Um, so this came natural. It was uh, God-given. What was your 40 time this fall? Uh, well, I didn't run the 40 in the fall or the spring. I, I ran the 40 uh, right before I came, and I ran a 4.45. In 2017, the expectations are high for BCU. Last year, the Wildcats went just four and six. But what's different about this team in 2017 than what we saw last year? Uh, well, it's the resurge. It's the resurge season. It's where we come back and, and show people that we're, we're not behind, that we're, we're constantly preparing and growing from each and every practice. So, And I just feel like this, this team is more of a team now. We, we, we feel in each other. We playing for each other. We playing brother to brother. I got my brother. He got my back. So, as they say, iron sharpens iron, and we just continue to push and continue to fight for one another. So, I feel like it's going to be a great year. <laughs> you never know what fans you'll see at Fan Day. I don't know who that guy is. What do you think caused that bond, Akevius? Um, that growth that you just discussed, iron sharpening iron. Um, just just us, us coming together, um, us starting to realize that it's bigger than just one person. That it, it takes a team to, to win a whole season to go to go on that that marathon at the end of the season. It takes a team, and just the seniors coming together and, and showing the younger guys how to do it, and how how this situation should be handled, and how you should go into practice taking it as a game each and every day. So I just say like by the vets or the seniors or the juniors that play showing the younger guys how to do it and how to hang around the guys who know how to do it correctly. Season over for the Wildcats, just days away, September the 2nd against the University of Miami. Akivius, what excites you about playing the Hurricanes? Uh, just the chance to go out and, and show the whole NCAA that BCU can do it, that we're, no, we're not behind, that we're also building up to, be, to beat a D1 division program, FBS ball. And uh, we feel confident in what we're doing. So, Akivius, thanks for your time. Good luck out of the field this fall. Yes, sir. We'll be right back with more on the BCU Wildcat Insider. The DNA of Bethune Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? In the Mideastern Athletic Conference, we believe the game of life shouldn't be a game of chance. That's why we're taught to work as hard in the classroom as we do on the field. Because you're not just playing for the trophy, you're playing for the ultimate prize, your future. The Mideastern Athletic Conference, 13 member institutions, 16 championships, one goal, educating student athletes for the game of life. At BCU, every game is a life lesson. A chance to show faith, respect, and sportsmanship. It's bigger than winning or losing. There's life beyond the game. Opportunities beyond the classroom. Responsibilities to our community. On a much larger stage. As ambassadors to the world. Leaders, champions, we are Wildcats.
and we believe in faith, integrity, and love. Enter to learn, depart to serve. That's the Bethune Cookman way. Go Wildcats! DNA of Bethune Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? And welcome back as we continue to give you an inside look at the 2017 Wildcats on our preseason insider special. With Brian Harvey, I'm Nolan Alexander. Brian, let's discuss this defense, and it all starts up front. You have to get to the quarterback, and there's some veterans that are going to put their hands down in the line of scrimmage for BCU. <laughs> Absolutely. You're talking about guys like Tony Evans, Kevin Thompson. Those are the two that I'm looking forward to seeing to have an absolutely outstanding year. There's nowhere to run on that defensive line, and, and that is telling the offense of the other team, there's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to hide. The defense line is stacked up front. If they do their jobs and you're at Larry Kelly Field, you will hear the names of some linebackers who can we expect to be making tap? You talk about a guy that's from down south, Alexander Morales. That is a guy that I'm looking forward to having a big season this year. And, and this guy right here, we, we've already discussed this kid right here, but this is a guy that hopefully is going to have another big year offensively. But when you talk about linebackers, I know he's he's a big fan of another one I'm talking about. Trenton Bridges, local kid, Deland, Bulldog. That's a guy along with Morales. They're going to make a big impact this year. Offensive guys are always trying to steal the spotlight. You know how it is. Absolutely. And the secondary, there's a key playmaker at safety, Deuce Deuce. Daquan Richardson, 60 tackles, four picks led the team last year. He expects to captain another veteran group for BCU. Absolutely. Deuce Deuce. That's the person that starts with in the safety position. But then you also talk about a guy like Arthur Williams. There is a no-fly zone back there in that safety. I've heard them say that plenty of times. No-fly zone. When you talk about 22 and 25, those are two guys that are going to be absolutely key in the safety position. All right, let's meet one of our defensive playmakers as we turn towards a junior, Alex Morales. Let's meet one of those names that you can expect to hear on Saturdays this fall, linebacker Alex Morales joining us. Alex, you just told me off camera you're a movie buff. Step Brothers is your favorite movie. Yes, sir. What's your role on this defense for BCU in 2017? My role on this defense for BCU 2017 would be a leader, a captain leader. Um, the defense actually expect me to, to hold them accountable and direct them where, where, where they belong and stuff. How do you lead? Give me an example of a way that you've tried to be a leader in fall camp. Um, fall camp leader, not just on the field, but off the field as well. You know, people look at me for any little thing, actions off the field, but on the field, I'd say, you know, controlling the defense and making sure um, players are where they're at, the defensive linemen are where they're at, their, their gaps and stuff, you know. Like has developing this leadership been natural to you or has it been a challenge? It's been a, it's been a challenge I would say because I'm not I'm not a very loud vocal person. I'm very like mellow and chilled so it's been kind of a challenge for me but as you can see I've been I've been progressing on it. So you truly are Netflix and chill. Yeah and that's you? Yeah 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 that's me. Absolutely. Season over for BCU is September the second against Miami a team in a city that you're familiar with from Hialeah High School down near Miami. How excited are you to go back to your home city? Oh man, it's, it's, you see I'm lost in words, man. It's just, it's, 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 it's shocking because my family is going to be there, friends, um, coaches from high school, and it's just, it's, it's amazing that I get to play back home. How big will the Morales clan be for that game? How many people are you expecting in the stands? Uh, i say a good 15 to 20. Wow, yeah. so big family. Yeah. yeah. What does family mean to you? Family means 
everything to me. Family is what I lean on, what I know. You know, um, I, I would consider BCU football my family as well, you know, because they, they brought me a long way now that I'm um, a redshirt junior now and the experience that I have here, that I've had here, it's, it's incredible, man. They're, they're, my, they're truly my family. Who on this team is like family to? Here are your closest brothers. My closest brothers? I can't single out one because I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be wrong for that, but I'll say all of them. All of them are truly, are truly like a brother to me. Now the word for BCU football this year is research. What does research mean to you? Bounce back. That's what it really means to me, a bounce back and a um, bounce back. That's, that's, a, that's it. How do you think BCU bounces back in 2017? Oh, it's, 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 it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a shocker because a lot of people don't expect us to, to, to come back off of the season we just had. So it's going to be a, a shocker and a lot of people are going to be surprised. Alex, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Good luck to you and the Wildcats this fall. Thank you. Continue to stay tuned here to the BCU preseason special of the Wildcat Insider Show. We'll return up next to the look at special teams and the road to the Celebration Bowl. Welcome back to the 2017 BCU Wildcat Insider Preseason Special as we give you a true look at what to expect out of the Wildcats in 2017. Brian, there's one area of the game that we haven't discussed yet. It's important too, special teams. We have some names that Wildcat fans have heard before. What can we expect out of that unit this season? You know what, well, Ashawn Larkins has done a fantastic job with the special teams unit. You, you talk about guys like Uriel Hernandez and a guy like Giovanni Francis. These are two guys that are going to be key. Uriel, kickoffs and field goals. Giovanni, punt and, and possibly could be kickoffs as well. That's going to be a fight to watch right there. But you're talking about two kids that have given their all throughout preseason camp, done a lot of work on the sides. You're going to have a new snapper this year. Uh, Murphy Allen is gone, but Ashawn Larkins has done a fantastic job with that team, and, and I really look forward to special teams playing a key part in some big games this year. If BC reaches its penultimate goal on the road to Atlanta to play for the Celebration Bowl on December 16th at the brand spanking new Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta, special teams will be key. Well, 
who's in the way for BCU to reach that goal of the Celebration Bowl? And I think, Brian, it starts out with the champions in Durham, North Carolina Central. What do the Eagles look like this year? Well, you're talking about a team that's got a lot of question marks, but a lot of uh, preseason hype on them at the same time. They lost a lot on the offensive line. You, you talk about losing Carl, which is one of their All-American centers. You talk about losing the All-American quarterback. You're talking about All-American free safeties. They lost a lot up there in, in Durham this year, but they also brought in a lot. They got some Juco transfers, got a couple high school kids, but I think it all starts with trying to replace Malcolm Bell, their quarterback, and then trying to replace Carl up front. But right now, there, there's some question marks for Jerry Mack and his team. But if you're talking about a three-time champ, obviously you're a three-time champ for a reason. You plug in holes throughout those three seasons. Right now, they're trying to go for a fourth, which would match South Carolina State from a couple years back. This is really, really going to be a question mark in Durham this year. Their preseason number one behind the Eagles, you have the Aggies of North Carolina a and State and the Bulldogs of South Carolina State, two teams that BCU will face this season. Absolutely. Let's start with a team in Greensboro, just up I-40 from, from Durham, you're talking about North Carolina A&T. Well, they lost Mr. Everything, Mr. Excitement, Mr. World in FCS football, Tariq Cohen. How do you replace him? I, I don't know. But then again, you, you've got keys on the outside. You've got some uh, some defensive linemen um, that, that are really great players in North Carolina a and Rod Broadway's a heck of a coach. This is a guy that's been around and won in every league he's been in. This is a guy that knows how to make plays uh, with, with playmakers and make people better. Greensboro is going to be a special place to watch this year, but a lot of question marks. Orangeburg, South Carolina, that's Buddy Pugh. He's not going to have back-to-back -back bad years. Never will, never has. Losing Caleb York is a big thing for South Carolina State, so the trigger man, what's going to happen up there with that? But with running back position, defensive position, they are stacked up there in Orangeburg. That is a team that you have to watch. Well, the road starts September the 2nd when the BCU Wildcats travel down to Miami Gardens to take on the Miami Hurricanes with a 12.30 p.m. kickoff. Brian, what can we expect of that season opener? I know there's a lot of excitement here in Daytona, and we expect a good showing by the Wildcat faithful in Miami. Well, Miami comes in a preseason top 25 team. This is the last couple of years they hadn't been a preseason top 25 team. A lot of depth at wide receiver, a defensive line that is supposedly one of the best in all of college football. We're going to be tested this year, and it's going to be great fun to watch. But we have a great South Florida fan base. It's going to be an absolutely star-studded event. Being able to play against the top 25 team will give us a bar of where we are this year and where we're going to be. It can only get better. But when you face a team like Miami, you got to be pumped up. These guys are excited. You're going down to South Florida. Many South Florida kids on this roster. Absolutely fantastic to go back home and to play in a new Hard Rock Stadium. BCU takes on the U. That is where the resurgence begins for the Wildcats in 2017. This isn't the only way you can keep up with the BCU Wildcats. Be sure to visit www.bcuathletics.com for in-depth stories, rosters, schedules, pictures, you name it. That's your home for the Wildcats. And we're all over social media, too. On Facebook, BCU Athletics. On Twitter, BCU Athletics and BCU Gridiron. If you love Instagram, we're there, too, at BCU Athletics. Even drop us a line on Snapchat, too. That's all the time we have for today. For Brian Harvey, I'm Nolan Alexander. Join us next week as Lynn Thompson sits down with head coach Terry Sims. This is the preseason special of the BCU Wildcat Insider Show.